Good afternoon learners. Welcome to NIOS. And today we will be covering chapter 17 in your syllabus that is India past and present. So basically this chapter was written by Jawahar Lal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. Jawahar Lal Nehru is, was educated in England Cambridge University. He spent most of his life for India's freedom struggle. Nehru began the essay by saying that his mind is full of India and his attempts to understand and analyze her. India's past and present. So basically, if you look at the name of the chapter, India past and present, you will see that in the essay, Nehru wants to analyze India. He wants to understand the state of India. To do this, he goes back to his childhood days when he experienced the country. At present, Nehru is proud of the nation and at the same time, he is ashamed of the nation. He is ashamed because of the superstitious practices, outworn ideas and the poverty of Indian people. In the lesson learners, it's quite evident that Nehru is proud of India, but at the same time, he is ashamed of the superstitious practices and the outworn ideas that exist in the minds of Indian people. He thinks of India in geographical terms, her past, present condition, the future and her role in the modern world. To talk about the future of India, Nehru needs the present. To talk about the present, Nehru needs to study about the past India. He decides to approach India's past as an alien through the West, so that he will not be able to be prejudiced and partial. According to Nehru learners, no other country in the world has such a long history and tradition. So according to him, he, India is the only country with such a long history and tradition. The vast panorama of India talks about the great past, but the 180 years of rule by the British has changed everything in India. And he says that why are people happy to be the slaves of the British? Nehru promises in the chapter to bring out the hidden past of India and make the Indians feel proud of their nation. He was aware of the fact that history to him was not an academic venture. It was more of a quest, a discovery of the unknown past. To reveal the truths about who we are and why we are the way we are in the present. Nehru says, learners, the roots of the present day lay in the past and so I make voyages of discovery into the past ever seeking a clue in it, in any such existed to the understanding of the present. Learners, I hope you know that Children's Day, which falls on 14th November, is celebrated to commemorate the birthday of Jawaharlal Nehru. So, I have given you a gist of the chapter, but before beginning with the chapter in detail, let's learn some interesting facts about Jawaharlal Nehru. Well, learners, Jawaharlal Nehru was born on the 14th of November, 1889 in Allahabad. He was born to affluent and well-known parents. His father was Motilal Nehru and his mother was Swarup Rani Thusu. Nehru grew up in the famous Anand Bhavan, which his father bought in the year 1930 for his family's residence. In the year 1970, Jawaharlal Nehru's daughter, Indra Gandhi, donated Anand Bhavan to the Indian government and it is still there and it is known as a historical house museum today. As a child learners, Nehru was very observant and thoughtful. He was homeschooled until his teenage years, after which he pursued further studies abroad. 
He was well read and well versed in many different subjects. Graduating with honors in natural science and then pursuing law in London. He returned to India in 1912, practicing as an advocate in Allahabad and then he qualified to become a barrister. In the year 1916, he married Kamla Kaur. Their daughter Indra Gandhi was born the next year. Indra Gandhi grew up and as you know, she became the first female Prime Minister of India. Nehru always had an interest in Indian politics, right from his days as a student in Britain. With a short time since his return to India, his interest in practicing law began to dwindle. He was, a key, he was, he was keener on practicing in political activities. He was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's principles of fighting without non-violence and was among the first to suggest the idea of complete independence from the British. He participated and led several marches and demonstrations and was imprisoned several times. His passion to establish an independent India with equality for every individual was strong enough to make him persevere through his times in jail. The very first speech learners Nehru made as the Prime Minister of Independent India was titled Trist with Destiny and it is considered to be one of the greatest speeches of the 20th century. Some of the eminent institutes in our country like AIMS, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, IITs, the IIMs, the National Institute of Technology were established under his leadership. He also made several reforms and changes to existing laws to eradicate social injustice and maintain harmony and peace among India's diverse communities. Nehru's classic clothing is still present and followed till today, with the Gandhi cap and the Nehru jacket being easily identifiable pieces. He was called Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru because of his roots in the Kashmiri Pandit family. Nehru has also authored many books such as The Discovery of India, Glimpses of World History as well as his autobiography Towards Freedom. A collective of his letters to, the, to his daughter when she was 10 years old and away at boarding school have been compiled and published as the book letters from a father to a daughter. So learners, now let's begin with the chapter. Do thoughts about India fill Nehru's mind? Now let's read the speech to find out his thoughts about India's past, present and future. After completing the lesson learners, you will be able to read and understand a speech in English. You will be able to use antonyms. You will be able to use the correct form of verbs, write summaries and give directions. Now let's begin with the speech, which is the part of your lesson 17. To endeavor to understand and describe the India of today would be the task of a brave man. To describe tomorrow's India would verge on rashness. What is India? That is a question which has come back again and again to my mind. The early beginnings of our history filled me with wonder. It was the past of a virile, vigorous race with a questioning spirit and an urge for free inquiry. And even in its earliest known period, giving evidence of a mature and tolerant civilization. Accepting life and its joys and burdens, it was ever searching for the ultimate and the universal. Gradually, deterioration set in. Thought lost its freshness and became stale. And the vitality and exuberance of youth gave place to crabbed age. Instead of spirit of adventure, there came lifeless routine. And the broad and exciting vision of the world was cabined and confined and lost in caste divisions. 
narrow social customs and ceremonials. Even so, India was vital enough to absorb the mass of people that flowed into her mighty ocean of humanity. And she never quite forgot the thoughts that had stirred in the days of her youthful vigor. Subsequently, India was powerfully influenced by coming of Islam and Muslim invasions. Western colonial powers followed, bringing a new type of domination and a new colonialism and at the same time the impact of fresh ideas and the industrial civilization that was growing up in Europe. This period culminated after a long struggle in independence and now we face the future with all this burden of the past upon us and the confused dreams and strings of the future that we seek to build. Today we are confused. Should we follow the lead given by the West and forget our past? Or should we try to retrieve the past glory of India? Gandhi showed us the right path, says Nehru. In the tumult and confusion of our time, we stand facing both ways, forward to the future and backward to the past, being pulled in both directions. How can he resolve this conflict and evolve a structure for living which fulfills our material needs and at the same time sustains our minds and spirit. What new ideals or old ideals varied and adapted to the new world? Can we place before our people and how can we galvanize the people into wakefulness and action? Change is essential but continuity is also necessary. The future has to be built on the foundations laid in the past and in the present. To deny the past and break with it completely is to uproot ourselves and sapless and dry up. It was the virtue of Gandhiji to keep his feet firmly planted in the rich traditions of our race and our soil and at the same time to function at, on the revolutionary plane. Above all, he laid stress on truth and peaceful means. Thus, he built on old foundations and at the same time oriented the structure towards the future. Living is a continual adjustment to changing conditions. The rapidity of technological changes in the last half century has made the necessity of social change greater than ever and there is a continual maladjustment. The advance of science and technology makes it definitely possible to solve most of the economic problems of the world and in particular to provide the primary necessities of life to everyone all over the world. The methods adopted will have to depend upon the background and cultural development of a country or a community. Nehru is both pleased and disappointed with modern India. What pleases him and what are his fears? Let's find out India today presents a very mixed picture of hope and anguish, of remarkable advances and at the same time of inertia, of a new spirit and also the dead hand of the past and of privileges, of an overall and growing unity and many disruptive tendencies. With all, there is a great vitality and ferment in people's minds and activities. It is a remarkable thing that a country and, a, and people rooted in this remote past who have shown so much resistance to change in the past should now be marching forward rapidly with resolute steps. What will emerge from the labor and the tumults of the present generation? I cannot say what tomorrow's India will be like. I can only express my hope and wishes. I want India to advance on the material plane, to fulfill her five-year plans to raise the standard of living of her vast population. I want the narrow conflicts of today in the name of religion or caste, language or province to cease and to seize and a classless and casteless society 
to be built up where every individual has full opportunity to grow according to his worth and ability. In particular, I hope that the curse of caste will be ended for there is neither democracy nor socialism on the basis of caste. So, learners, we have read the chapter word by word. Now, let's go through the analysis of the chapter. Well, learners, in this, in this speech, Nehru offers his thoughts on Indian history as well as his dreams for the future. In the speech, he is repeating it again and again that India has lost her youthful vitality and a sense of freshness. The civilization was separated into castes and became, you know, and many people became slaves of this caste system. He is saying in the speech that currently India is caught between the past and the future, both of which are pulling India in opposite directions. But he also says that despite the tumultuous thing, the, 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 you know, the confusions that are happening in India, he is complimenting and praising Gandhi that he chose the golden road, the high path. Nehru says that he respects transition while yet he is still working for a dramatic change. He was a strong supporter of truth and non-violent means. This attempted to establish a new India. Nehru feels pleased and dissatisfied with modern India. He says that Indians are now marching ahead with zeal. Nehru desires for the country that, you know, the country should become self-sufficient. The people of the country should quit battling over religion, caste, language or province. There should be a society which has no, uh, that, you know, he believes that there should be a society which should be devoid of any class or caste. Okay, so the system of class and caste should not exist in a society. He wanted individuals to broaden their horizon. Okay, he wanted, he wanted the citizens of the country to be self-sufficient, to be knowledgeable, to be broad-minded and not to fight over petty issues like caste and class. Nehru was proud of India's mature and tolerant culture which used to be a powerful and energetic race. Petty caste and religious distinctions arose in medieval India. India could adapt to changing situations and new influences, but it never forgot its ideals and traditions. So here, you know, he's, he's in the essay, he is saying that India had to face so much. India went through so many changes, but then still it never forgot its true ideals and traditions. Europeans brought innovative ideas, information, and they even brought the Industrial Revolution to India. And they also exploited Indian resources as well. But still, India is still standing erect and has never forgot its traditions. Nehru wishes and he wished to select the ideal structure for the country's prosperity and advancement. He wants the country to be to prosper, okay, and to you know walk on the path of progress. He wanted to figure out the best approach to go forward while still preserving our rich cultural heritage. He wanted the citizens to go forward, to, to progress in their lives, but they should also conserve and preserve their rich cultural heritage. So, uh, like in the speech, you must have come across that Nehru is saying that India had a very brave and dynamic history with a questioning spirit and desire for freedom. It was known for having a civilization that was mature and tolerant, as well as strong and energetic race. 
people in medieval india were filled with curiosity and a desire to learn medieval india became a location for youth and freshness but it also became a breeding ground for ill temper why because caste system arose in the medieval india okay so uh, nehru is saying that yes medieval india was known for its freshness and youth but you know the ill but it also gave um, encouragement to caste system caste system came out of the medieval india according to nehru in medieval india rigid caste distinctions and customs took priority over broad minded vision here he is saying that you know very petty issues over caste came to be the priority and broad mindedness was ignored india was powerfully influenced by the different invasions and here he is talking about you know the muslim invasion or the british invasion and with every invasion a new type of domination came into place it changed for the worse and europeans took the advantage of indians and their resources and we got influenced by fresh european ideals and knowledge and we are still influenced by the european ideals and knowledge which is wrong we should we should you know be proud of our rich cultural heritage nehru mentions that the future of our country should be built on the foundations laid in the past and in the present with truth and peaceful means in the speech nehru praises gandhi ji's revolutionary work towards country towards the freedom of the country he is complimenting gandhi's work because gandhi ji worked a lot for our country he worked a lot for our freedom so you know he is praising his revolutionary work and he is also saying that one should not be concerned with petty caste and religious differences but one should rather adopt the finest framework for the country's prosperity and advancement one should not be disturbed over petty caste and religious fights or differences rather one should move towards prosperity and technological advancements he then says science and technology contribute to economic and industrial growth and can meet the fundamental requirements of everyone on the planet here learners nehru in his speech is giving emphasis on science and technology how science and technology contribute to the economic and industrial growth of the country he is saying that india now is a highly mixed image of hope and pain with significant progress rising togetherness but several unsettling tendencies so what do you mean by this learners here nehru is saying that yes india has a lot of hope india has a lot of positivity but yes it has lot of you know unsettling tendencies it has lot of caste issues lot of class issues it has you know the issue of poverty it has the issue of population india is moving on the path of togetherness the path of brotherhood the path of born homi but yes there are several other unsettling issues that should be regarded that should be you know paid attention to in india the spirit of india should inspire people to act and bring change nehru expects that india's material progress would increase living conditions for its huge population he wants citizens to reduce religious or caste related problems and to create a classless and casteless society in which every individual is given equal chance to thrive to survive based on his or her merit and skill okay so here uh, he is saying that knowledge should be given to everybody people should not be discriminated on the basis of caste or religion 
every individual should be given equal opportunity only on the basis of skill and merit. Okay? There is a mental conflict caused by trying to retain both old values and spirit and material progress. So in this lesson, you know, in this in Nehru's speech, a mental conflict is quite apparent. Whether to follow old traditions, whether to follow the material progress, what should be the spirit. So Nehru wants a balance between old values, spirit and material progress. If there is an appropriate balance between these three, uh, you know, in between these three qualities, then India will definitely move on the path of progress. He also says that Gandhiji used both continuity and change in his revolutionary work towards freedom struggle. The advantages are that it uses truth and peaceful ways to bring about revolutionary change. So basically Gandhi like you know his works were based on truthfulness and non-violence means. Okay. He uses methods that are Indian in origin. Gandhiji always believed in using things that are made in India. And Nehru wants both. He wants both continuity and he wants change. He wants people to follow old traditions and yet he believes that if we if we'll adopt technology, then there will be a shift, there will be a paradigm shift and we will move on the path of progress. Okay, so even like Gandhiji, Nehru also wants both continuity and change. In the speech, like I have said, he praises Gandhiji's revolutionary work. And he also wants to change the whole, you know, the whole technological aspect of India. He wants to bring in the technology. Science and technology, he says, will be able to solve the problem of providing primary necessities of life to everyone all over the world. Nehru finds it remarkable that people who refused to change in the past are now marching forward with speed and determination. So basically here Nehru is proud of its citizens. People who earlier were not ready to change are now, okay, he can see that people are changing, that they are now marching forward with speed and with determination. Even people are fed up of fighting over issues, okay, by fighting over caste issues. They want to move forward. They want to walk on the path of progress. Nehru's vision is of a prosperous India. I hope today's lesson has proven to be beneficial to you. I'll see you again. Thank you for listening and attending. Thank you.